We chose Georgia Tech because we want to do the impossible. And this school is equipped with the resources and faculty to help us do just that. And so, in the words of Sir Isaac Newton, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Georgia Tech is proud of its many traditions, but the one I find most exciting is our tradition of excellence. Our mission as students is not to follow in the footsteps of the astronauts, Nobel Prize laureates, and president who graduated before us, but to exceed their footsteps, crush the shoulders of the giants upon whom we stand. We here are all such innovative people, so I am telling you, if you want to change the world, you're at Georgia Tech. You can do that. If you want to build the Iron Man suit, you're at Georgia Tech. You can do that. If you want to play theme music during your convocation speech like a badass, we're at Georgia Tech. We can do that. I am doing that. We told you so. Well, Nicholas, uh, his speech has already gotten over a million views on YouTube. A few of those are mine, I'm going to be honest, OK? Uh, Nicholas is joining us now. And I take it, Nick, this was not your first time on stage? That's true. That's true, yeah. <laughs> You've done this before. Yes, not quite to this extent, but yeah. And where did this inspiration from the speech come from? Sure, it was actually uh, from my speech and debate coach back in high school. I, I performed hmm. in that activity in, uh, at Desert Vista High School back in Phoenix, Arizona. And one of my coaches, his name is Andy Stone, uh, he, he performed a similar speech in college. It was actually on science fiction literature, though. And he mm -hmm. did the whole like epic music climax with the, you can do that, and all, you know, all that stuff. And when I saw that, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So uh, when I was thinking of like a cool way to end my speech, I asked him and I was like, hey, do you mind if I use this idea? Uh -huh. And he was and he very graciously said, yeah, sure. And so I did and everybody loved it. Can I ask, what did the freshman class think of it? What, were, what did their faces look like when you really went to town there? <laughs> um, they, they seemed to really like it. Actually, the parents seemed to like it even more, funnily enough. Um, but that's my favorite part of the clip is, is when it flashes to the freshmen who are clapping and they just like, I don't, what just happened? I don't know. <laughs> it was cool, but. Well, because they're probably, you know, commencement sometimes is where you might get some sort of inspiration. Normally it's a pretty blase thing, mm -hmm. so you really stepped it up. <laughs> um, you know, so we spoke to Andy Stone, your speech coach yesterday. Uh -huh. He said he was very proud of you. Have you spoken to him since the speech went viral? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's, he's a really cool guy, like a really, really cool guy. Um, and we had a great conversation just a couple of days ago about the, the whole thing and we were excited. What did he say to you? I mean, uh, you, you probably should ask him more, but uh, he, he reiterated that he was very proud of me and um, there's obviously no bad blood between us. I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of his. Uh -huh. Okay. So <laughs> I think that that kind of, uh, that, that kind of helped him be more gracious towards me as he, he knows that I'm in, he's an amazing person in my mind. So. You perhaps exceeded his expectations. Um, I imagine <laughs> that right now you're, you're a bit of a, a big man on campus. Uh, people probably notice you <laughs> as you walk around right now and, and you're probably getting some attention that you never had before. Yeah, that's, that's for any, sure. Um, any dates, any girls' numbers? Actually, I have a girlfriend. Okay. Um, and she is fantastic. She's back in my hometown of Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, long distance. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. What does she think? Um, she's, <laughs> she's, she's enjoying this. She's, yeah. I mean, she wasn't she's, surprised? Uh, no, she was very, very surprised that this, <laughs> that this thing exploded like it did, as was everyone. I've been, I've been getting asked a few times, like, hey, uh, you know, were you expecting this? No, of course I wasn't expecting this to happen. I don't think anyone ever does. Um, but yeah, my, Katie's been great with this whole thing. She's been having a lot of fun uh, with me and she's been getting contacted by people too. So, it's so how did this all come to be that you were the one giving this speech? And, uh, and, and were the professors cool with you? I, I, I sort of looked behind you to see what one of the, how they would react to you. They were sort of unsure at first <laughs> and then they got into it. Yeah, it kind of looked like Bud Peterson was like hiding his face yeah. towards the beginning of the speech. Um, it, it, I, it was an application process. Like I, I applied to be the, uh, the, the convocation speaker with an abstract that I submitted, and they liked the abstract, so I submitted, the, I submitted an audition video on top of that, and they really liked that, so I got to speak. 
And, and you're breaking stereotype because uh, you're a mechanical engineer. <laughs> I went to school with some of those, and, uh -huh. and they, they're not typically happy, enthusiastic people. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Ivan Watson keeping it real. Well, <laughs> all right. Thank you. I think. Yeah. No, I mean it was, it was amazing. And and before we do go, Nick. Give us a little line tailored to CNN, please. Okay. Um, well, if you, if you want fact-based news, you're at CNN. You can do that. <laughs> I love that it. Good? Nick Selby, thank you so well much done. for coming by. We love that. <laughs> thank we you.